Now, I'm going to give you a proper introduction coming up, but I should mention that the amazing Kreskin, Kreskin has walked into Studio Q. It is so good to see you again. Well, uh, my father will be excited. You know, my father, I told you, I, I remember I told you, he and I, one of the things we share in life is you and, and watching you. you when I first moved to Canada with, uh, uh, you know, with my family and, and, he, and he and I would sit and watch you. But it's so exciting. Now, I know you heard the opening we did. I got to tell you something. I, I, I have to say this because I travel the world. I've um, last year did 303 appearances around the world. And since you last saw me, uh, a year ago, March, the airline industry announced that I have so far in my career flown a little over 3 million miles, <laughs> more than many pilots here in Canada, United States. But I have to say, I've been, I've been introduced, I've had things done. And the past year, well, t two years have been incredible experiences since I saw you. But this was very, very moving. You have no idea. I compare it to something that happened. Uh, I wasn't really going to talk about this. Uh, January 12th of this year, the town in which I grew up in, and I've always kept called well quiet because we, we always need a place to stop the world and get off. I'm only home four days a month. But they saluted a birthday. We, I don't want to mention the the uh, age because people would think that 75 is too old. But when they this is in Jersey, said, right? In Jersey. Yeah. But here, I didn't know this. It was a big celebration. That same night, David Letterman decides to celebrate my birthday on the air, and I'm not even there. You know, it was very. It's kind of very. I was very moved on what he had in the past. The past month or so, be, uh, talking to people like Colin Hanks, who was in a movie I'll mention, and talking about me, I, it was very, I, I sent a personal note to David because of what he had to say. Well, you moved me very deeply. It was a, it was a great creative opening, but and then when you brought in the Chopin Nocturne, because I'm Polish and and, and I love uh, yeah, I'm very. But you know the thing is, we do ident we identify that opening week of Q when we first yes. launched this show, and we were doing something totally new. You know, know. we're trying to do this I multidisciplinary know. show that's going to run the gamut from punk rock to high art, yes. so-called high art, the, and the whole spectrum. That's what and, I like about and, it. And and we and you weren't you know, narrowed People down. were saying that there's no appetite for long form, long interviews. Oh. We want to do that, all of that stuff, we're going against the co you know conventions, and and so we launched this thing and. And at the time, too, now you see, um, knock on wood, we, we uh, do you knock on wood or dementalists knock on wood? Is that, is that <laughs> redundant it, for you? I do it mentally. <laughs> yeah. So, so no, yeah. <laughs> knock on wood by the power of Kreskin. We, we um, now we, all kinds of fabulous people want to be on the show. I we, look, get, we got I, these I great guests, right? Steve you, Martin was just on. It's all it. But, you but, Steve but Martin in the on. beginning... We couldn't get, you know, I mean, people are just like, what is this? Q, all right, we'd never heard of this. I mean, you know, we're launching the show. So you were like, our, you know, this, first of all, this was a big get. We got Kreskin, you know. It's a, in our, and then you just came in here and, you know, uh, somehow you, you're, the way you shook up the studio loosened me up too, right? And, and so we do think about the beginning of the show as, as you being part of that. So it's that, and that is why that, that, was, an, that was an honest, that was an earnest to say this way. I know it was. It was a very general, and I want to tell you something, and I say this to listeners. If you don't think I was deeply moved by it, it really, uh, you know, I've traveled the world everywhere you can imagine, and this this is three million miles. I understand. Yeah, and yeah. I and I'm, I was telling everybody about the first week that you're and, I, and you you met your dad and what have you. Can I tell you something comparable? Something that made, made you just said something made me think of something. A new show's on on NBC in the states uh, late night. Jimmy Fallon, yeah, young guy, came out of Saturday Night Live and what have you. True story. I've never told this publicly. Um, I'm on. Um, the show's only on a month or so, and I'm on a I'm on a talk show in in um, in uh, uh, New England, but I'm not there in person. And a book I had written, which I'm going to uh, show you in a moment. I just didn't. It's it's in the other room. I have I have it for you. And they said, Kreskin, would you mind if we have someone? Someone's called us from New York. I said, Well, New York, uh, they want to talk to you on the air. And I said, Well, okay. And it was Jimmy Fallon. I said, Oh. Uh, Mr. Fallon, I, I don't know you. I see your show. He said, would you do me a, would you do me a favor, Kreski? Would you appear on my show? I said, of course I will. And he got excited. And, uh, three, <laughs> we we I'm, all get excited. Well, no, I did three shows. But a story that your listeners might find quite fascinating, uh, those have been around for a while, and the young people, because, of course, you hit an, uh, an age range, and he hits a lot of the young people when we watch television as kids. That's the audience he's getting. Right. So I walk. I get to NBC, which I've been at hundreds, hundreds of times, and downstairs at Rockefeller Plaza are two men, and they said, we're the producers. And I said, gee, I'm, 
I'm very flattered. Nice you sent a car, but to meet me down. <laughs> Kreskin, would you mind walking in the studio? I said, fine. I, you know, I don't rehearse what I do. This is not a trick. He says, no, no, we don't. There's no audience. I said, oh, that's okay. They said nothing and listened to this sequence. We're walking without conversation. I'm thinking, what's going on? I walk in the studio and I froze. And I got very uh, choked up and, and uh, very moved. And uh, I said, I can't talk. They said, would you say this to Jimmy Fallon when you walk up? It was of the 88 Carson shows where half the shows were done in mm. my career with him. I could tell you every corner of that story because so many things happened. So we did the show and he, they, he, I talked about how this is a deja vu experience. And then they heard something. They said, uh, what is this about NBC banning you from doing something with Carson? True story, never told it publicly. We never rehearsed, and I would tell the, 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 the talent coordinator, wherever I where it was in Canada, the States, or what have you, I'm on next week, this is what I'm going to do. Fine, Kreskin, we'll, 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 we'll set up the staging and everything is fine. And I tell them, and I say, you better ask Johnny if this is okay. They call me back and say, Johnny, it's fine, whatever you want, to, you, you want to do with him. Then I get a call, and you'll get a kick out of this. Guy from NBC says, I'm from NBC. I saw the car store. He says, no, 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 I'm one of the officials of NBC. <laughs> You're going to do this with Johnny uh, uh, two days from now? Yeah, you're not to do this. I, okay, fine. I mean, you what don't was it? Was it like, yeah, no, I said, you don't argue with the Pope or the President or maybe God, you know. So that's fine. Now, day before the show, I'm in the Midwest at some university. I get a call from Carson's secretary. When can Johnny call you? Never calls me. Well, I finished the show, and you're in L.A. now, so it's going to be three hours early. I should be in my hotel room at 12 midnight. Johnny's going to call you. I said, oh, great calls me on the phone very few words he's a very private man and if he sat in here he would sit in the corner by himself if it was a group of people he's very shy johnny carson very shy hmm. give him an audience and he said he says the so-and-so at nbc told you not to do this with me i said yeah he had a few words from which we can't mention on any shows these days right, people right. heard all four letters of each of the words <laughs> he says you're going to do this kreskin and the background is i walk in the studio two days later Johnny walks over to me, and he no motions. There's a guy in the front row in this audience. Obviously, he must be NBC because Carson is shafting it to him. Bottom line is, as Carson stood there, and Ed McMahon and Serenson came over, they got scared because in about 10 seconds, Carson's eyes closed. He got very rigid. We lifted him, stretched him between two chairs, his head on one, his feet in the other. Nothing in the middle. It was no trickery. And a lady I, on the show came over. I said, come over here. She says, I said, sit on him. She says, don't. I said, sit on him. Had dinner with her last time. She said, I thought it was the end of my career. It was Bette Midler. Hmm. She sat in the middle of him. That picture was across the nation. And don't you know, on on uh, Jimmy Fallon, I duplicated the test, but I didn't s sit on him. Uh, I s ended up standing on him as he was suspended between two chairs. And NBC repeated it three nights in a <laughs> row. So isn't it something walking into... Did you get banned for a while? No. No, you only, never actually did. No, I got banned. Right, yeah. Only that incident. They said, don't do it, and Carson says, we're doing it anyway. So here's the thing. I mean, <laughs> Jimmy, see, Jimmy's like me in the sense that he, he probably grew up, you know, yeah, he saw yes, you we watching, and, and yeah. you, you were this wi wild wow <laughs> wizard to us. You know, how is this man? And, and so so he's excited. But, you know, there is an another generation. But That's right. And he's got that generation. Now, this yeah. young generation who don't know you yeah. as well. So for them, let me do this introduction. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> no, because, you I'm going to hire this guy to follow me around the world, no. guys. <laughs> I, 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 I'm hiring. He's I, thought, I thought you were three years ago, but you said that <laughs> last time. Did you hear that line, folks? All right. <laughs> amazing is literally my next guest's middle oh. name. Of course, the amazing Kreskin. By the way, I was supposed to do Q News. This is what this is. Oh, I'm I was sorry. supposed to talk I'm about sorry. who won the, the uh, or who's nominated for the Governor General's Literary Awards and, you know, all this stuff. But I, I'm not going to do that because you're well, here. I'm, I'm going to go straight to you. I don't want to. News is important. Well, well some of that's funny, <laughs> funny, too. There's some funny. Did you know that? Uh, all right. I'll, I'll come, come back to that. Here's my introduction. Amazing is literally my next guest's middle name. Of course, the amazing Kreskin adopted that name for himself, but decade after decade as a TV mainstay, a live performer, a sought-after consultant, and prolific author, Kreskin has always lived up to his amazing moniker. The world's foremost mentalist and pop culture fixture is back in Canada, where his still legendary TV series, The Amazing World of Kreskin, originated back in the 1970s. He's a mentalist, an entertainer, and a Q favorite. The Amazing Kreskin is in Studio Q. Hello, sir. 
Hello, sir. There's your... The, He's a mentalist, an entertainer, and a Q favorite. The amazing Kreskin is back in Studio Q. Hello, sir. There's your formal introduction. You know, now, I, I'm going to hire now, him, by the way, to, <laughs> to introduce me around the world. That's yeah, all I could. Because you've done three million miles, I understand. Over, I, you've I'm never only, said that before in the air. I, I'm, only, I'm only home uh, four <laughs> days a month, and my life has been, my life, who would have ever dreamt that when I saw you, I, I didn't go into it then, that... A movie was being released, and now now you can see it. By the way, folks listening, in the past two month month, it's on five or six times a week in all the mar- in many of the markets. It's called The Great Buck Howard, produced by Tom Hanks. Who's We're going to get it. to that. Yeah. I'm I'm going to now. I'm going to interview you. All, all right, because right, I, I know I'm you don't let me. Much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me try and interview. You. Try. Don't say try. I'm, I got to let him interview me. <laughs> <laughs> You're 75. You 75 are 75 years old. Years old. Yes. Uh, you I still, still jog an hour every night. You still jog it. You, last time you, you said, what, five in the morning you do it? Or when do you do four it? Four in the morning. Four in the morning. Four in the morning. I didn't the last night, but I, I, I jog about 45 minutes. You yeah. jog for yeah. 45 well, minutes? I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm an energetic person. I, I, I don't go to bed until about five in the morning because I'm, I read four books. I read four books a day when I'm home. I like to read. And and for 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 a new gen for people who don't know you don't forget right. the new generation I mean right. there might be somebody still out there who no, doesn't know right. the American Rescue Agency. <laughs> There's got to be. What do you now? How do you now describe what you do? What well, is who who is the Amazing Kreskin? Well, uh, it's interesting you ask me because uh, I've always called myself a mentalist, not the mentalist uh, of the of the of the TV series, you know, uh, who was a fake and then observes what's on people's shoes because he's that that's a great series. He plays uh, really a Sherlock Holmes. And by the way, with my new book coming out, the full story of that series is going to be seen because nobody knows about this and nobody at CBS admitted it for one year before the series appeared. CBS kept interviewing me about the 84 crime cases I was involved in in my career. Mm. I have the names of all the people. I think it's quite accidental that suddenly the mentalist came out after all those interviews. But I'm a thought reader. If people would only, uh, last night it was quite dramatic because I told uh, a couple their, their wedding date and some key factors in their life at the, at, uh, the Riviera uh, a few weeks ago. A lady from, I believe, Brazil, I told her, and it's complicated, the, the license number on her automobile in Brazil. But if she didn't know it, I couldn't tell her. If she said, where am I going to be next month on such a date? If she doesn't know the answer, I can only say the date and it ends there. The person must concentrate. Now. You get into people's minds. minds. Now, last you, night you, was traumatic. You know, I've talked to you about, in all my shows, my check is hidden by the audience. Yes. I'm out of the theater. If it could be an audience of 3,000, uh, 22,000, or a private affair, I, and I'm guarded. When I come back... My check has been hidden by the audience. No one talks to Your me. Your paycheck. My paycheck. It's hidden in the audience. Anywhere in the, oh, anywhere in the theater. Yeah, okay. Carnegie Hall, it was four balconies. Right. If I don't find it, I don't get paid. And I failed nine times. And it was pretty close last night. I thought it was going to be. How do you go about? I mean, when you they, say you don't they, find it, you don't actually turn over every seat. I mean, you, no, no, you have to find no, it. You have to I know physically where find it right, and right. sense what the people are concentrating. So if that I test up, doesn't work, you don't get yeah, paid. I almost gave up last night, and uh, it didn't take me three, four, five minutes to find it. I literally was giving up. I said, this is my last attempt. Uh, took me 20 minutes to find the check. That, that's happened maybe seven times in my entire life. And how life. do you feel when that happens? Is that like was, kryptonite? Are you, I was do you, exhausted. Do you feel like your powers I was, have been... I was wiped out, I'm telling you. I, I had a second half of the show. The audience was tremendous. And you know what it was? I, now I want to share with you folks. People ask me. You've never Regis, said this before. Regis right. uh, off camera yeah. always asked me. 109 shows with him. He's well, one, I kept going in the audience, and five or six times I picked up a novel. A man was written, thumbed through it. There was some canceled checks. Check was the book wasn't there. And finally, one more time, I said, "Sir, you're my last person on the committee. If I can't go and get it, this is it. I end it." Walked in the audience got the book again, and the way he thought, this sounds crazy, open the pages wide, you're almost breaking the, breaking the binding. They had folded the check so tiny, it was near the inside mm. of the binding, and riffling through, I never found it. I was wiped out after I found it. Wow. That. And do you ever, does, does a Kreskin, do you ever doubt yourself? I no. mean, do you have moments of self-doubt? No. Because that would be a, I no. would think, a, a liability me. for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, the closest thing is, uh, and, and this is not the movie when the 
Buck Howard movie came out. Cindy Adams, who's a very fine gossip column, a show business columnist in the East Coast, legendary, she said, if anyone thinks this is a trick, and she used the term, she says, I was a conduit for Kreskin. Years ago, there was a series called The Lifestyle, The Rich and Famous, and they went to celebrities' homes. You young people, it was Robin Leach. He's now in Vegas now. I'm going to see him in a few weeks. But he came to my home. Did all, I said, Robin, I got one more segment. He says, no, we only do two segments. What do you have in mind? I told him, he says, you're insane. I said, no, I'll try to do it. He says, well, if it fails, we won't show it. I says, no. My career has been this, and everyone in the business knows this. If I fail on camera, that's the way the people have to know me, the integrity of what I do. The test was simple. I was driven in New York the next day to Tavern on the Green. Cindy Adams, who I did not know, sat across in a limousine. I said, Cindy, don't talk. Talk to me in your mind. I had to find Robin Leach hidden anywhere in the entire city of New York. It was madness because I, I tell, would tell the driver where to drive. I police cars all over the place. They mm. said, Kreskin, we couldn't help you because we didn't know where he was. I'm going down certain streets one way, the wrong way. The police said it was chaotic cars. I finally come to this old building. I go up to this floor. and we It's an old uh, sports uh, club. but It's empty. It's early in the morning. And I come to a swimming pool and I stand there. I stand there for five minutes and there's nobody in it. She, Cindy Anna said, lady, she said, I don't know what to do. I'm thinking and you're standing there. Mm. I finally find a door. There's a bar there, but it's early. They're cleaning glasses. A guy's draped over the bar. I touch him and I said, we got to stop here. The guy sits up and says, Kreskin, I'm Robin Leach. Get out the champagne. I, I found him in 42 minutes. <laughs> and Cindy said to him, well, we were out there for five minutes. He says, out where? Looking at the pool. And he started, he jumped up. He says, damn it. When they told me you began the search, I changed my bathing suit. I was swimming in that pool wow. for 25 minutes, hoping you'd find me there before I changed wow. my clothes. Listen, I've got five got, five minutes uh, I know, before I we're know, off the air. I know. I've before got, we're off I the got, air? Before, I mean, not, you know, we go to yeah, no, other CBC break. program. I got to talk about that. I got to say about Buck Howard. Yeah, anyway. I, 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 well, I got tons of questions for yeah, you. Do you, do you, you. Will you do a test? Or is that, you don't have to. Yeah, I could. I, yes, is you know, you know what I'd like to try to do? Too short a time? Uh, it's a little short time, but I need, I need you here for an hour and a half. We got the piano. There's all kinds of things. You know I what I'd like to do? do? What do you want? You know what I'd like to do? Uh, um, next time, next time I come back, can we set can we set aside a half an hour, forty minutes? Of course, we yeah. Well, I mean, I'd like to come back and, and you don't uh, have time for a test. You don't have time. Uh, five minutes. We could, but we wouldn't, wouldn't talk about it. You know what? Um, I'm gonna promote all your stuff. Yeah, don't you know worry what? About no, that. I know that. Uh, yeah. You know what? Um, can I? Uh, do I don't want the camera to see what I'm going to do right now okay. because they'll think it's rigged. Okay. So can the camera be shut away? Yeah, we can turn that camera Is away. Is this camera off here? Yeah, that camera's on me. Don't worry about that. Oh, yeah. And, the, okay. and we won't. Yeah, okay. I, there you go. Uh, I never did anything you, with you regarding time, did I? No. Regarding, your your life is based on time. Yeah. You're like a hero of mine in my when I was a kid, Arthur Godfrey, your life is based on time. Trust me. Trust me. I want you to close your eyes now. Right. Now, folks, camera's not showing this because the camera by me is wait a minute just like i gotta set something just a second i gotta watch here and i uh wait a minute my eyes still closed your eyes still closed all right. all right you can open your eyes for a second right now let me just do this all right uh you open your eyes we had an out uh an energy an energy outage here let's say the entire town city of toronto is dark we have your, had a power outage yeah, yeah. i want you to close your eyes yeah, okay you have landed in this city from outer space that's we got to make it the most and you don't know what time it is. It's dark. Right. There's been a, but all you have to help you is a clock in town. When I say begin, it's going to start to chime. I want you mentally to count the amount of chimes. <laughs> and when it stops chiming, you will have an hour because that's the amount of chimes. Now begin, start counting the chimes. Tell me when you've got the time, the final time. You let me know. Just let me know. It's going to be one of 12 chimes. It'll stop. Count the amount. When it's stopped, let me know. Just say now. As soon as it closed, he's thinking. No. Well, how many, what time was it? What time? Well, actually, it was 12. Why did you say, well, actually, it was 12? I'm very curious. Why did you say, actually, it was 12? Because Tell you me. said something about 12, but that's what, that's what I But that's me. what you counted? Yeah. Would you tell them what time I set my watch to? Uh, it says it's eight o'clock or five, three, two minutes to eight. 
you know what? Can I ask you why you, uh, uh, can we try this one more time? Do yeah, we have yeah, time? Yeah, we got three minutes. We got three minutes? Yeah, okay. All right. All I'm right. I close my eyes. You know what? I, you know what? It was my mistake. I said 12, which suggested a time. Yeah. All right. Listen, he's going to get it. Was it going to be eight? Because I almost stopped yes, at eight, eight and then I went yes, to 12. Yes, it was eight. That's what it was. Oh. Try, can we do one yeah, more time? Okay, right. But that's what it was. Eight o'clock. All right. <laughs> now, listen, so folks. Try this right. at home, folks. Right. Try this. All right. Um, this, this, uh, this is radio silence. And I, I'm sorry I said the 12 because I had set it to eight o'clock. Ready? Begin now. What time? Ten. There's a reason why you said ten o'clock. Can I can I ask you what the reason is? What's the reason you said ten? I just felt like where I, I, I was going to stop. What time did I set it to? <laughs> ten o'clock. He got it. He got the ten. You he cross the ten. me. I, but I know how you think. I don't. I don't mean to say. I know your style of thinking. That was a mistake for me to say twelve because I had sent it before yeah, to eight yeah. o'clock. But I, if I did this four more times, you would stop each at that time. First of all, you're in music. You have a sound. You have a way of thinking in the terms of sound. I would not do this with everybody, but in, when I do this with celebrities such as you, those who are musically oriented, it'll work. I can get you to hear something. Isn't yeah. it fascinating how the I, mind is? I, I, it just he got I, it. It, yeah. it. It made sense that I had to stop there. You know, I got to say something to you. You did I, it. I want to say something to you. Uh, I'm not going to say goodbye, but in the spirit of broadcasting, let's say to be continued, okay? Because you are a, a joy are to know. Are you joking right now? No, I'm serious. That's what I say at the end of each show. I say I to be continued. I did not know That's that. my thing. Kraskin, I don't know about you. <laughs> Mentalist, entertainer, Q favorite, the amazing Kraskin has been with me here live in Studio Q.